All right. <clears throat> Praise the Lord, everybody. It's good to see each and every one of you. We want to welcome you all out to our Thursday night Bible study where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except he be drawn by him. And it's truly a blessing to see each and every one of you. Just want to welcome you. I'm a little bit rushing. I had to offer some words of comfort and a prayer to Brother Mario Ramey for his mother's homegoing service tonight at Pilgrim Rest. So that's why I'm rushing. I had to rush here and get settled in and and just relax for a second. Whew, I was rushing up the street, but it's good to see all of you. Want to welcome you again. Let us have a word of prayer so we can get the study going on tonight. Yes, let us keep the um, Mario Ramey and his family in our prayers tonight. Um, tonight was his mother's home going, and I had to offer words of comfort and a prayer at the service that began at six. So that's why I'm rushing. I apologize, a little running behind, so I had to hurry up and get in here and get set up. But it's good to see all of you on Zoom. Good to see all of you on Facebook with us as well. To God be the glory. Uh, let us have a word of prayer. Let me start this recorder. Let's see. Here we go. All right. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we come before your presence this night, thanking you for all your many blessings. Lord, we look to you who is and has been the author and finisher of our faith on tonight. Lord, we appreciate the work that you're doing in each of our lives. And Father, we just come asking forgiveness for all of our sins and all of our transgressions. As we welcome many who are present tonight on Zoom, and we welcome those who are with us on social media tonight. And Father, we appreciate what you're doing. Continue to comfort each and every one of us comfort Mario's family as well. Wrap them in our loving arms. We pray for the peace of the city of Jerusalem as well. But Father, we appreciate your presence tonight as you will allow me and everyone else to exhale and relax to let the Holy Spirit lead and guide us on tonight. Father, we appreciate all that you've done for us on this day, and we praise you for the things that are in the making. But Father, we ask that you continue to watch over us, bless us, come and collectively as you have been. But Lord, again, we appreciate your grace, your mercy, your strength that you give us and provide for us. Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who died for us 2,024 years ago. And Lord, we thank you so much for what you're doing and the things that you have in store for each and every one of us, how you're continuing to look to us to help us find peace and hope in these troubling times. Father, again, we ask all these blessings in the matchless priceless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Again, I just want to welcome you all. Good to see all of you on Zoom tonight. Good to see y'all on Facebook. Uh, Sister Hollins, Sister Givens, Brother Slocums, good to see all of y'all. Come on in. Gather around. Make sure you have your Bibles with you tonight because we are having and beginning our Bible study tonight. To God be the glory. I'm just rushing, but I'm just really thankful to be here tonight. Woo-wee, just rushing, rushing. All right, so we have left off from last week, which lesson number or letter number O, but tonight is lesson number E. And it's good to welcome you again. You're still coming on. It's good to see all of you coming on in. Come on in, gather around. Make sure you have your Bibles with, the, with you because we began this study in the beginning of the year. And as we transition in the seventh month, we found a title 
finding peace and hope in troubling times. And yes, there is a little bit of trouble in my life, but I'm trying to get through this, but I need the Lord's help. And he has been helping me, but certain days it's a little rough than others. But I have to remember what David said in Psalms 46, verse one, he said, God is our refuge and our strength and an ever present help in times of trouble. Well, yes, there's a little bit of trouble in my life, but I thank God because trouble does not last always, but I'm waiting patiently for that day for the burden to be lessened, but I'm going to tarry on through this as he told me, just preach and teach your way through this storm that you're going through, and that's what I'm going to continue to do. But on tonight, I really would like to show us something very unique that God is continuing to bless each and every one of us in a very special way. And I thank God because I still see many more going on. Praise God. I see you. I see you. Y'all come on in as we are getting everything settled in. <laughs> Y'all bear with me because I'm trying to get everything going and but God is good. But I had a little interesting day, but to God be the glory, I made it successfully on in here. But I know one thing. Ooh, we, all right, y'all, here we go. So tonight, I want to focus on a different theme tonight, even though it's still in the same concept with finding peace and hope in troubling times. But this theme that we're going to look at tonight we will be learning and working on in tonight's class. I need to remind somebody tonight that God is removing blockages and hindrances and commanding blessings to flow to you and overtake you. Yes, he's going to remove some stuff. And I know we only got two more months left for a new year, but I know a lot of us have been holding on to some stuff. We have been keeping some things. We've been, it's hard to let go of some things, but God is getting ready to remove some blockages and hindrances away from you and out of your life. And you got to praise him and rejoice because he's getting ready to do it. I feel it. I know it. When life is dealing you in unexpected and unpleasant blows, you must understand that the blessings don't seem to be flowing your way time at times. I know it'd be like that. But as God's covenant child, as we all are, you can be sure that that is just only a matter of time before he removes the hindrances and causes that's bringing showers, storms, streams, and rivers that's going to flow your way and bless you. But the thing is, you guys, you got to believe it. Some of us don't believe what God is going to do. And that's the reason why it haven't fell your way yet, because you don't believe it. You got to trust it because it says those who walk faithfully with the Lord and put their trust in him can fully expect the obstacles to be removed. You got to believe that because in the book of Isaiah, chapter 57, verse 14 says what? Let me say that again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 57, verse 14 says, build up, build up, prepare the road, remove the obstacles out of the way of my people. See, and I know a lot of us have obstacles, but a lot of us like these obstacles for some reason because we still keeping them there. But listen, what obstacles needs to be removed in your life? Only you know what they are. This is God's way of encouraging you and confirming that he will indeed remove them and command blessings to flow to you and overtake you. He's going to do it, but you got to believe and trust in him. You see, life for many of us often is full of obstacles. Has anyone had a hard time with some obstacles in your way and some things that you brought over from 2023 
to 2024, is it still there? Is some of these things that hindered you is still there? Y'all know some of these same people is in your phone, they're your friends, they're on your gram, they're in your way, but for some reason, you want many of these people in your way. But guess what? Many times we are faced with obstacles in our own families. Hallelujah. Yeah, we got obstacles in our families. We got obstacles in your finances. Oh, yes, you do. You got obstacles with the people who you run with, the people that be on your phone, the people you be texting. You have a lot of obstacles in your way, but your faith, your health, and a other host of issues just might be some obstacles, you know? But I've learned over the years that I either can overcome my obstacles or my obstacles can overcome me. And I don't know what you're going to do tonight, but let me tell you this. God is truly amazing, but you have to find out if he's amazing. Jesus says something very interesting in St. John chapter 16, verse 33. You know what Jesus said? These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you will have peace, and in the world you will have tribulation. Do you want peace tonight, or are you going to deal with some tribulation that's going on in your life? But he said, be of good cheer, though. I have overcome the world. He's overcome the worldly tribulations. But Jesus makes it clear that in this world, we will face difficulties. And let me tell you something. Yes, you're going to face some difficulties. You're going to face some fences, some roadblocks, some ditches, some potholes. But you gotta be, you got to be faithful and know that Jesus is overcome the world. He's already did it. But if you got Jesus in you, that's how you're going to overcome things. But overcoming hindrances to loving God wholeheartedly, that's what you got to do. You see, in the journey of faith tonight, one of the most profound commands Jesus gives to us is to love God with all your heart, with your mind, with your soul, and with all thy strength. He said that, in St. Mark chapter 12, verse 30. Yes, he did. You see, yet, as Christian men and women, we are seeking to deepen our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and with God, and we often find ourselves grappling with hindrances that derail us from wholehearted devotion. These obstacles can always slightly creep into our lives. See, I know a lot of us need to give God devotion, but we need to be delivered and we got some dilemmas in our lives. But we have to make sure nothing is hindering us from fully embracing the greatest commandment. But I want to do this tonight. Let's explore four common obstacles and discover the strategies for overcoming these hindrances to wholehearted devotion. Well, you might want to get your pen you might want to get your pencil. You might want to get us some sticky notes or a piece of paper. What I'm going to do is give you four common obstacles to discover the strategies for overcoming these hindrances and whole, to wholehearted devotion. I'm going to help you tonight. What is something that is a overcoming and overcoming you tonight? The first thing is an obstacle is this three-letter word, which is sin. Yeah, number one. Sin is the number one obstacle. Perhaps the most obvious hindrance to loving God wholeheartedly is sin tonight. Whether it's pride, it's selfishness, or unconfessed sin, unconfessed wrongdoings, sin erects a barrier in our relationship with God. Let me tell you something. Sin puts up a fence. Sin puts up a block. Sin puts you in a cocoon that God cannot touch you because you have sinful ways, 
sinful thinking, sinful thoughts, in some of them sinful places y'all go to. Listen, you know what's eye-opening to me, though? Was the realization that not loving God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength and sinning, half-hearted devotion is not acceptable anymore than stealing half of an outfit out of Target. Let me say that again. You know what's eye-opening to me? It's the realization that when you're not loving God with your heart, soul, strength, and mind, your devotion is not acceptable if you don't love God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. It's just like stealing half of an outfit from Target. Y'all better stop that. Listen, wholehearted pursuit is required of every believer. God wants every believer, every Christian, every child of God to wholeheartedly pursuit of him not simply for the few looking for extra spiritual points. Sin, my friend, is serious. Therefore, it's essential for each of us to recognize its destructive nature of sin. We got to repent of it, seek forgiveness, and restoration through Christ's redeeming love. Embracing a posture of repentance that opens the door to deepening a communion with God. Yes, that's what you got to do. But guess what? That was number one. Here go number two is what? Believing and trusting God. That's another obstacle we encounter is a lack of faith and trust in God's character and promises. The reason why we don't know God's promises because the promises are in the word of God. That's why we fold when failure comes our way. This has been the most crippling factor in the Christian life tonight. But when we are faced with challenges and uncertainties, I have struggled to believe God will be faithful to me. We got to understand that at times. Although we have the full assurance, we have to be faithful to him just like he's faithful to us. Maybe you have. I hope you have as well. But guess what this thing? Doubt can overshadow our confidence in his sovereignty and his goodness at times. However, cultivating a steadfast faith requires first believing what the Bible teacher, who is the Holy Spirit, is saying and making intentional efforts and surrendering your worries and your anxieties to God. As we meditate on his word and recall his faithfulness, in his past, our trust in him grows, enabling us to live unhindered lives. Did you hear what I just said? When you meditate on his word and recall his faithfulness in your past, why do you think God has brought you from a mighty long way? That's what the songwriter says. If God brought you from a mighty long way, some of y'all don't even know the name of the song. Some of y'all don't even know the words because Y'all think y'all brought y'all self here, but there's a reason he brings you from a mighty long way, but he has something else in store for you. But you got to trust him and grow so he can enable us to live an unhindered life. Well, that's number two. Well, number three is guess what? Good to see you, Pastor Foster, tonight. Listen, number three is forgetting who God is and what he can do. Some of y'all didn't forgot what God can do. I know you have, but you didn't forget what somebody said to you yesterday. You didn't forget what somebody did back to you in preschool. You remember all this other junk and stuff, but you forget what God has done for you. Isn't that something? Sometimes it's not a belief issue at all, but a remembering one. Let me say that again. It's not a belief issue, but it's a remembering one issue. We tend to have a sort of spiritual amnesia regarding God's greatness and his power. Listen, the forgetfulness can do what? Can cause us to help others to get out of a jam, but we can't get ourselves out of a jam. Listen, let me say that again. This is the problem. We tend to want to help everybody else out of their own jam, but a lot of us 
forget the jams that God has already got us out of. That's because we have this forgetfulness and it calls us to help others, but we can't get our own self out of our own jams because God is able to get us out of the jam. But I know a lot of us only like jam on our on our bread, but listen, or in alternative places for solace and help. But to combat this hindrance, you and I must remind ourselves of his faithfulness in the past so that this record fuels our faith about the future. That's the problem. Y'all keep forgetting what God has done. That's why y'all repeated offenders keep going over the same mistakes, dealing with the same people, going to the same places, talking to the same people. That's because you can't remember what God has done for you. And here's the fourth one. The number fourth one is what? Fear. This is the number one hindrance is fear. Oh, my goodness. God wants us to walk by faith, not by fear. And fear is one of the hindrances I've mentioned so far. Fear is probably the most effective for keeping us from the loving the Lord wholeheartedly. Listen, fear often does what? It paralyzes us inhabits our ability to trust in God. Whether it's fear of failure, fear of rejection, or fear of the unknown, it can hold us back from fully surrendering to God's will. That's the problem. A lot of us don't even know what God's will is because his will is his word. But however, God repeatedly assures us in his word that he has not given us the spirit of fear but of power, love, and a sound mind. That's why some of y'all out of your mind now. That's why you don't have a peace of mind because God knows that you got fear in your heart, but he didn't give us that spirit of fear. He wants to give you the power of the Holy Ghost, the love of the Holy Ghost, and the love of that sound mind. But overcoming the fear to lean into God with everything we are to require, it requires a risk though. And the control freaks, we are, we struggle to loosen our death grips on the management of, well, everything. That's the problem. Y'all have to quit fearing everything else and fear God. But I know some of y'all scared of people. Y'all scared of what this person gonna say, what this person gonna do, but nobody fears God no more. But living this way will never lead us to wholehearted devotion if you're doing this. It's time to let go. Whatever it is you're currently afraid of, there's a better way. And I want you to get the help you need, which is right on the right path when you follow Jesus Christ. That's what you got to do. But let me do this. I want to talk about eight biblical ways to overcome obstacles even when it seems impossible. Yes, let's talk about eight ways to overcome obstacles. Does anyone got any obstacles in your life right now? Because some of y'all didn't drag some of them obstacles from 2023 over here into 2024, and we thought you was going to be done with him. We thought you was going to be done with her. We thought you was going to be done with this. We thought you was going to be done with that. But you still holding on to it. We got two months left. And you mean to tell me you didn't drag this through 2024 and you finna try to bring it into 2025? You need to get rid of it. Only you know what it is tonight. Have you ever been in a situation that left you feeling hopeless and stressed out, wondering if things will ever change tonight? Has there ever been a time you felt so stuck that you couldn't find a way to pull yourself out? No matter what you've tried tonight, the other factors keep getting thrown at you, keeping you in the same place. Well, guess what? I only got two words for you tonight. Y'all know what those two words is? But God. Let me say that again. If you're dealing with something that's holding you back, stopping you from enjoying the faith and the joys of the Lord, it's only two words you got to say. Just say, but God. <laughs> yeah, I know something about that. And you better learn tonight 
Truly, nothing is impossible with God. You got to believe that tonight. No matter what you're dealing with, he will always be there to guide and comfort you. You got to believe it. I know that. Being a new Christian means having a new life. Some of us are still living the old life whenever that was when it began. I don't know when it was when he caught up with you, but I remember my date. I always will, because we have to remember what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 and 18, because Paul says what? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. All things have passed away, and look, new things have come. Everything is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. I'm so glad I received the message of reconciliation, April 18th, 1993. You see, I thought I was into something, but I really wasn't into nothing. But I know one thing, I had to find Jesus Christ, and but he found me. You see, after I was saved, I became a new creation in Christ. Just like the symbol of being born again is a butterfly. You see, y'all know what a butterfly looks like before it becomes a butterfly, right? You just wasn't born a butterfly. A lot of us remember the story about the caterpillar. See, a lot of us may be a butterfly, but we still got the mind of a caterpillar. Let me help somebody tonight. You may have the mind of a caterpillar, even though you are a butterfly, because this butterfly don't hang out with caterpillars no more. Why are you still dealing with caterpillar conversation, caterpillar ways, caterpillar places? Paul says, I saw the world and everything was different and new. And I realized that myself. You see, the Bible says that Christians are not of this world. But that doesn't mean that we don't have battles to fight in this world. In fact, as a Christian, we are fighting spiritual battles that others can't even begin to comprehend. Let me say that again. When you are a born-again Christian, you are a child of God, you are dealing with spiritual warfare. Paul says we war not against flesh and blood, meaning other people, but I know sometimes we get caught up into these arguments dealing with people, but you got to understand somebody is on the inside of that person, and you have to understand the Holy Ghost is in you. I don't know what's in them, but you're going to have to decipher and discern what's going on and relax sometimes. We want to be going to put two on the 10 and got our volumes at 10 and everybody want to go to 11, 12, getting loud, but nobody's not getting nowhere. We are dealing with a spiritual warfare, my friend. We are constantly at all times in spiritual warfare with the adversary, the devil. Ephesians 6 verses 10 and 11 tells us that, and our flesh is fighting back its old nature. Did you know that? You already dealing with one battle with your five senses, touching, tasting, hearing, seeing, and smelling. That's because this is the exterior of who you are. But you have to understand that has to be changed because when you're born, you're living on the outside to the inside. But when you become born again, the Holy Ghost comes in. Now you are changed to live inside out. Y'all probably didn't catch that. That's why it's so hard, because you're transitioning, you're transforming, just like a transformer. But we keep transforming back into that old person sometimes. We may lose friends, you might lose family, and you might lose certain things we once desired from that old life. I understand that, but obstacles are inedible. They will always be a part of the Christian walk. Did somebody lie to and told you that when you become a Christian, you don't get sick no more? Did somebody tell you you'll not have any problems no more? Well, you better ask somebody. That's totally wrong. Your Christian walk is full of trials, tribulations, and struggle because the Holy Ghost and God is trying to conform, trying to change, strange, and make 
and shape and mold you to the firstborn image of his son. That's what he's trying to do. However, it doesn't mean that we have to face them on our own or overcome them on our own strength. God is going to send the comforter to comfort you from what you're going through. And we will undoubtedly experience many ups and downs and face fresh challenges and new obstacles around every turn. Did anybody mess with you today? Well, you know what to do. You see, these obstacles will slow you down. And if we aren't careful, they will hinder you and bring you down and move us away from walking forward in the faith with Jesus Christ. You better ask somebody because, but these obstacles aren't necessary a bad thing. Let me tell you tonight, whatever you're going through, it's not a bad thing. You know why? Because God can use them to grow us up in our faith and to teach us how to depend on him in every day, in every way of our lives. That's the beautiful part about this. God never promised us an easy life, but he did promise us that he will always be there for us and never leave us nor forsake us. Oh yes, that's what he did say. You see, we can trust our heavenly father, to guide us through the darkest valleys of our lives. So how can we overcome difficult obstacles? Well, what does the Bible say? I'm going to give you some biblical truths to help you overcome these obstacles and walk in victory. And you know what? I think I might give you eight of them because the number eight is the number of new beginnings. So I'm trying to help somebody begin a newness if we can tonight. Let me give you number one, the strategy for number one biblical truth so you can overcome your obstacles tonight is overcome obstacles by reading your Bible. Oh my goodness. That's the best strategy that I can even imagine right now in my heart. Number one, overcome your obstacles by reading your Bible. See, a lot of us don't read. We don't study, but we pick up other things. We pick up our phones. We pick up these apps and do everything else, but we don't read the word of God. Let me tell you this. If you don't have a Bible app on your phone, even though you got Candy Crush and all these other games, please put a Bible app on your phone or tablet tonight if you don't have one with all the midst of other things. And if you got your paperback and hardback, that's all good. I'm just trying to help somebody tonight. If you got everything handy else, everything else is handy, why the word of God can't be handy either? Well, we want to YouTube this and Google this and Google that. Well, let's see what God has to say about some of this stuff you're dealing with. Because we got to remember, reading the Bible is like what? Psalms 19, 119, 105 says, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I like that because good to see uh, Carrie Walker. I'm trying to help y'all tonight. This is the beautiful thing. You see, that first one, you got to read your Bible. First things first, listen. Read your Bible. Study your Bible. Filling your mind with Scripture will keep you focused on God above and what Jesus Christ said it at the right hand of God and not on the other things of this world. See, when you have the word of God in your life, it changes you, it comforts you. The word of God reminds me of a blanket. There are times that I may feel cold, but the word of God warms me up in most cases. You see, time in the word is always helpful tonight. No matter what you're going through, I'm dealing with 34 years with this book now, and it's just second nature to pick it up, read it, study it, and sometimes if I don't have it in front of me, it's good to have enough word written in your heart. See, the word of God is concealed in the mind and written on the tabernacles of your heart. You see, no matter what you're going through, the word of God will help you through it. The answers you need are right there in the Bible. You don't have to Google it. You don't have to ask questions on your page and post. 
You don't have to email nobody. The word of God is waiting for you to uncover them. They're right there in your face. Have your word nearby with you at all times that the word of God may be written in your mind, in your heart. Yes, that's what you got to do. That's number one. Strategy number two. Overcome obstacles by staying in prayer. Good to see you, Beverly Edwards. Let me see something. Y'all got to understand, we're going through the eight things of the truth to help you overcome obstacles to walk in victory. So if you got your pen, pencil, paper, I'm giving you eight biblical truths to help you overcome obstacles to walk in victory. Number one, strategy is overcome obstacles by reading the Bible. Number two, overcome obstacles by staying in prayer. You got to talk to God because everybody keep talking to everybody else. When people call your phone, you look at it. You answer that, but you don't talk to God. Listen, Philippians chapter four, verse six says what? Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Let me help somebody tonight. You know why the reason nothing hasn't changed in your life? Because the Bible says you have not because you ask not. Did you ask God for what you need? Or did you ask him? Or did you ask her? Did you ask them? Or did you ask that? You need to ask God for everything that you need and according to his will, though. You see, the Bible commands us to pray without ceasing. Prayer is the direct form of communication between yourself and God tonight. Did you know that? God tells us to let all of our requests be known to him. He cares about you, so don't be afraid to let him know what you're going through. But y'all so quick to tell somebody else what you're going through. But God already knew you was going to go through it before you going through it right now. He's just trying to see if you're going to let him know you need some help. But I know you're going to ask them to help you. When facing obstacles, it is essential to stay in contact with God and ask him for his help and his guidance. But I know that's so hard for us to do. Plus, when you're not in the normality and repetition of doing this, you just don't do it. But you must do it, and you need to start doing it right now. Listen, we got two months left, and it's not too late to pray to God. It's definitely not too late. Number three, overcome obstacles by casting down imaginations. Uh-oh. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. What are we talking about casting down imaginations? Well, guess what? Casting down imaginations is just a fancy way of saying reject negative or sinful thoughts. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. You mean to tell me they say an idle mind is the devil's workshop? Well, if you have your little shop of horrors going on up there, that's your business. But you better get your mind right, get your mind clean. The Bible says, let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Jesus. Well, for Jesus to be in your mind, he has to be in your heart first. See, the problem is the reason why your mind drifts and goes places, because you don't have the Holy Ghost full throttle into your heart and life. See, Jesus has to come into your heart to tell your mind what to do. And that's a daily warfare many of you dealing with now. Your mind is telling you to do one thing and your heart is telling you to do another. And what about your eyes? 
Your eyes telling you to do something. Your ears telling you to do something. Your mouth trying to tell you to do something. Then your eyes is telling you to do something. Then your mind and your heart. That's several different things got your attention. But if you have Jesus Christ in your heart, he will direct all these other areas in your mind, heart, strength, soul, and your life. You got to triumph. As Christ followers, we are called to fulfill our minds with true and godly things. That's what you got to do. That's Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. You got to remember that. We should not entertain every thought or feeling that comes into your mind. And I know y'all got some stuff that come to y'all mind, and y'all just let your mind drift, take you where you need to go. Now you're trying to figure out, how did I get over here? How did I end up in this? What is they doing? Listen, you better cut that out because your mind will get you lost in the sauce. I know it will. You got to do what? Tearing down strongholds and eliminating negative thought patterns will help us create a more positive and Christ-like mindset. You see, a lot of y'all don't understand the reason why you think the stuff that you think is because your mind is not centered on Christ. You keep trying to figure out where all these thoughts come from. As let me help y'all again, as I told you before, if you look at the beginning of your day and when your day closes at the end of your day, was you tempted more today or was you tested a lot today? That will give you a good example who mostly in your ear. Is the devil in your ear? Or is the God or is God in your heart? Let me say that again. Did you receive a lot of tests today from God? Or did you receive a lot of temptations today from the devil? That's your business, though. This process will strengthen and equip us for the many trials and tribulations we will face in our walk in Christ. This thing is not easy, but it will get better as you stay close to the fire, when I say stay close to the fire, these are people that worship the Lord Jesus Christ, people who are born again, people who are saved, people who are redeemed by the blood of the lamb, other Christians, because a lot of y'all friends, they really just the last three letters of the word friend, which is E-N-D. They just end. Y'all notice the word end is in friend? Y'all better check some of these friends and see if they just ends that you need to, to close out. Number four, strategy number four, overcome obstacles by choosing faith over fear. Oh, yes, this is the main one. Second Timothy 1 and 7 says what? For God have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Listen, you always and must choose faith over fear, but a lot of us have fear on top of faith. You need to switch that around. In other words, you need to put a big X on fear. And let me tell you something tonight. A lot of you guys fear because the letter fear, if you remove the letter F from fear, you got ear. See, a lot of us fear a lot of things that we have heard and have not even seen yet. Yeah, you got to watch what's coming in here. But you got to make sure faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things which are not seen. I understand that things can be stressful and overwhelming at times, but we must not give an ear to fear. You follow me? The Bible says what? That God's perfect love has the power to cast out fear. You have to believe that though. When we choose faith over fear, we cast our troubles, cast our tribulations, cast our anxiety on the one who cares about us most. Your friends don't care nothing about you. Jesus Christ cares all about you. 
but you got to try them. And some of us have not even tried them yet. Listen, strategy number five, overcome obstacles by abstaining from sin. Listen, abstain from all appearance of evil. First Thessalonians chapter five, verse 22 says what? Whenever you face challenges, do not give in to them. Don't give in or entertain sin. The devil knows your weaknesses and will do whatever he can to drag you down and away from living a life that is pleasing to God. Let me tell you something. Some of y'all have told some of your friends your darkest secrets. You have told some of your friends some stuff that you shouldn't have told them. But guess what? Some of the stuff you didn't tell them, the devil told your friend how to get you. And y'all sitting up there getting got all the time by the devil working through people. You know how they say, let the Lord use you? Well, some of y'all letting the devil use you. You're losing y'all well and good. Isn't that something? That is why it's essential to keep our focus on God. If God is blurry in your life, you need to fix your focus on him. Think about the end goal. Overcome obstacles without being led astray by temptations of the flesh. Yes, we got to hold it, fix it, flee from it, run from it. Number strategy number six. What we got to do? Overcome obstacles by trusting God completely. That's a good strategy, number six. Well, guess what? Number six lets us know in Proverbs chapter three, verse five is to what? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto your own understanding. That's the problem right there. A lot of us lean to our own understanding and we must acknowledge him in all your ways. You notice the word all is there. It didn't say some or few, it, <clears throat> it said all your ways acknowledge him. That means good and bad. You got to put all your faith and trust in God alone tonight. He is the only one who can truly guide you through whatever you're going through. But I know we like to trust some of our friends to get us out of stuff. Sometimes we trust our money to get us out of stuff. Sometimes we trust our credit score to get us out of stuff. Sometimes we trust our education, your degree, to get you out of stuff. But there's only certain things that God is going to be able to bring you out of. God always knows what's best for you. And he knows everything about you, too. He is absolutely trustworthy tonight. Yes, he is. Can you trust him or will you trust him? Number seven, strategy number seven. Overcome obstacles by seeking strength and wisdom from God. Let me say that again. Overcome obstacles by seeking strength and wisdom from God. Number seven. What does it say? And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. I like that because there are moments in times where when I'm real weak, that's the best time that God is at work. And there are times you feel in yourself, you feel like you got it going on. Oh my goodness. That's a danger zone to feel that way. Oh, you got to stay humble, stay low, stay weak. That's why I always walk in the meekness of the Lord. I stay quiet. I stay in my lane. I don't do nothing out the extraordinary away from God's will. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities. That's what Paul said. He wants to glory in what he's going through, that the power of Christ may rest upon you. When you're going through something, you just don't realize that it is God who wants to bring you through it and show you a better way. He says, in my reproaches and in my necessities, in my persecutions, in my distress, in my stress, in my depression, 
in my oppression. What I'm going through is for Christ's sake, y'all. That's who you doing this for. It says, for when I'm weak, then I'm strong. So I try to stay weak. So God is strong in me. It's hard maybe for you to do it, but there's a way you can do it. I love to stay weak. There's an old saying, seven days away from God makes one week. Now, trust me, I didn't, now let me tell you this. If you stay away from God, that's W-E-E-K makes one week. But when you strong in the Lord, I bet you, you better stay weak. It's better to stay weak, W-E-A-K, in the Lord versus staying away from God makes one weak. Yes, it does. But you want to be weak in the Lord because that makes you strong in the Lord. God is strong and he makes us strong, especially when we're weak. Obstacles expose our weaknesses and increase our dependency upon God through Christ Jesus. They help us to see how strong and powerful our God is. He alone gives us strength and wisdom we need to undo. He's the only one that's going to bring you through this, y'all. If you've been thinking some things that you shouldn't have been thinking, we can ask God to remove bad thoughts. If you ask him, he'll do it. The reason why them bad thoughts there is because you didn't ask him. Listen, number eight. Number eight, strategy number eight. Overcome obstacles by trusting in God's plan. Did you know that God got a plan for you? Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. God has some plans for you out of this world, but I know somebody got some plans for you too. And I know one thing, you better stop letting people be the planner in your life. You better let God make plans for you. And stop letting other people make plans for what they want you to do. They're going to say jump. You're going to say how high. You better let God bring you up and raise you up. Amen. And on the other side of this, God's ways are always better than our ways. Let's say that with me again. God's ways are always better than our, our ways. It says for God's Thoughts are not our thoughts. God has a plan and a purpose for our lives. You see, as Christians tonight, we are to follow his plans and seek his will for our lives tonight. Trusting in God's plan keeps us on the straight and narrow path and helps us endure these obstacles tonight. As I come to the finish line tonight and I see that four plus four is what? Eight. And it's eight o'clock, but I'm going to conclude with thoughts on overcoming these obstacles. So I'm right on time. You got to surround yourself with others who will support and encourage you tonight. That's what you got to do. Can you look through your phone and your friends list on Facebook and Instagram? Is anyone in your friends list? going to support and encourage you tonight? If they not going to do it, that's your business. I'm going to let you figure that out. They must be there for some other reasons, especially when times get tough. Can you call on these people? Some of us need to go to church, find a church home, get under the fellowship and umbrella of a shepherd, which is a pastor that can help lead and guide you through what you're going through and fellowship with other believers. If you take time to dig deep, you will discover that they are struggling to overcome obstacles too. It's a shame that you got people in your phone going through stuff just like you, but they running to you for help, but you can't help them. Listen, there is no situation that is too difficult for God to handle tonight. 
There is nothing that is impossible with God. You are a child of God tonight. You are a son of the living God tonight. You are a king of the daughter tonight. King of the kings. You're a king of kings with the king of kings tonight. You are part of God's family, and you got to know that you are. Remember, you are and where you belong. That is your strip tonight. But some of us don't even know where we are, whose we are, and where we going. Do you know what God called you to do tonight? God called you to do something. He saved you to save someone else. Your ministry starts in your home. Did you know that? Your ministry starts with your son, your daughter, your husband, your wife, your brothers, your sisters, nieces, nephews, cousins, friends. It's all on you, my friend. But let me tell you this. You must always rely on God and put him first. This is the key to getting through any obstacle that this life will throw at you. Let's praise God tonight. We made Amen. it on through here. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let me give you your word for the week tonight. The word for the week is this. The word for the week is basically a little something. Even though we had a good lesson tonight, the word for the week is just a little something for you to put in your purse, put in your pocket, or put in your back pocket. The word for the week is this. Don't let your mind bully your body into believing it must carry the burden of all your worries. Amen. Let me say that again. Don't let your mind bully you. Y'all know what bullies are, right? Don't let your mind bully your body into believing it must carry the burden of all your worries. Man, oh you got to bring your worries, bring your cares to Jesus Christ, and he will carry them for you. Yeah. But y'all might call somebody, text somebody, and say, help me out with this. That's what you normally do. But to God be the glory, I thank y'all so much tonight. Thank y'all so much on Facebook. I see your Sister Givens, Sister Hollins, Brother Slocum. I see Marcus Mitchell. I see you. I see you. I see you. Beverly Edwards. I see you, Sister Tahara. Carrie Walker. I see y'all. Y'all, praise God for y'all stopping on by tonight. To God be the glory. Amen. Pastor Foster, I see you. Oh, Sister Tasha. That's my Sister Tasha. Uh, Kitor Trent McLaughlin Sr., I see you. Praise God. Y'all came on and stopped through tonight. To God be the glory. That's my brother Stephen Parker right there. That's my doctor. It's good to see y'all in the news. It's good to see y'all in the chat on here on news, um, on Facebook. Good to see y'all. Love y'all so much. Good to see all of y'all on Facebook tonight. Amen. Good to God be the glory. Good to see y'all on Zoom tonight. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Anybody have any questions or comments? I see Sister Tracy and Sister Coleman in the chat on Zoom. To God be the glory. Anyone have any questions or comments tonight? Thank Good you for the testimony, sir. Amen. Praise God, Mom. Good to hear your voice. All right. Amen. Very good lesson. Thank you, you. Give us something to think about. Yes. Because we don't think that our minds can do things for us or make us do things that we don't want to do. But the word said, be sin by word, thought, and deed. Yes. So if you think of it carefully, we would know sometimes our minds go where we don't even want it to go. But you give us some explanations tonight that we can think of. And I like the word for the week. Because sometimes we do let our minds bully us and take us where we don't want to go. Yes. We thank the Lord for Jesus who died and rose again and give us life eternal if he chose it. So we thank the Lord for you also. And Amen. may the Lord continue to bless you. Thank you so much, Mom. 
And yep. uh, like Sister Tracy said, read the word for the week again. I most definitely will and surely will. Yeah. The word for the week is don't let your mind bully your body into believing it must carry the burden of all your worries. Don't let your mind bully your body. That's the first thing. A lot of us let our mind bully us into stuff that we shouldn't have said, we shouldn't have went over there, shouldn't have did this, shouldn't have did that. That's because your mind bullied you. Your mind go bully you? Your, did your mind shake your fist at you say, you better do this? Some of y'all doing stuff in the mind ain't saying nothing. Yeah, That's because you want to do it. Your heart wants you to do it. <laughs> That's the enemy working. <laughs> hey man, to God be the glory. Good to see y'all so much. <laughs> well, we're going to wrap it up tonight and we're going to get ready to discern the Lord's body tonight. To God be the glory. Um, let me see. I think I think I see brother and sister Terry from Texas on tonight. Good to see y'all. To God be the glory. Amen. Yes, love y'all so much. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. All right. So someone said something. I thought I heard something. Oh, okay. Well, we good. We good. We're going to make sure we get ready to discern the Lord's body. And we're going to wrap this up tonight in the name of Jesus to discern the Lord's body. Did anyone have any questions or comments before we wrap up? Good to see you, Sister Ina. That's my sister right there. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> up, y'all. Hey. So if yeah. nothing else, we will wrap this class up tonight in the Lord's will. We'll see y'all on Sunday, if it be the Lord's will. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yeah. Well, let us do this. Let us pray. Dear Father God, again, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard on tonight. Lord, we appreciate your presence. Lord, we appreciate your word. Lord, I thank you for allowing me to sit down inside myself and listen to what you need to say. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for every Zoom listener, viewer, and caller tonight. Lord, we thank you for all who stopped by on social media, Facebook tonight. It's so easy to keep scrolling, but whatever they stopped by and heard, it was for their ears yes. to receive. Father, we pray for the peace of the city of Jerusalem. Father, we pray for Brother Mario and his family dealing with their hours and our bereavement. Wrap your loving arms around each and every one of them. Touch them in a mighty special way. Lord, touch each and every one of us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Fill us with your word. Fill us with your spirit. Show us the way. Lead us the way. Lord, as we have two months left, let us clean house. Let us remove hindrances. Yes. Let us remove obstacles that are in our way. Because, Father, some of us have dragged a lot of things from 2023 into 2024, and it's still there. Give us the power to break loose and detach from the change and struggles and things that hinder us in this walk of Christ Jesus. Father, we ask that you bless us in a very unique way. Show us the way, lead us, guide us. Father, we thank you for those who are here tonight to hear what needed to be heard so they can take what they need to live their lives freely by the obedience of the Holy Ghost. Yes. But Father, again, at this moment, as we transition into a prayer of forgiveness, we ask that you remove anything that's not right within our heart, spirit, mind, and our souls. Father, forgive us if we looked at someone, said something, or thought something inappropriately 
Father, forgive us. Lord, forgive us for all of our sins of omission and our sins of commission tonight. Lord, cover us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Lord, wash us with your blood, even though our sins may be red like crimson stain. The power of the blood of Jesus Christ is able to cleanse us and wash our sins whiter than snow. Wash our mind, wash our mouth, wash our hearts on tonight. Father, again, we appreciate your presence as we prepare to discern your body, allow us to look back at Golgotha's Hill at the finished work you did and accomplished, which was the plan of salvation. Father, you hung, bled, and died for us. And you were placed in a borrowed tomb. You stayed there three days and three nights. <clears throat> and you rose from the dead with all power, honor, and glory. We thank you for that. And we ask all these blessings in the matchless priceless name of Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Love y'all so Amen. much. And as we stay steadfast and stand by, I'm going to get our sacraments on this side. If you want to take communion with us, all you have to do is just find a little piece of bread or cracker and a little bit of juice. And that's all you need to discern the Lord's body with us because Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me to show forth my death and suffering till I come again. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. So I'll be right back in 20 seconds. Stan. Amen. 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 When the time came for Jesus to sit with his disciples at the end of the Passover, he broke bread with them and told them, this is my body that was given for you as a ransom and that his body was broken for us even though his body was actually literally broken by the beating of the scourge on his back, yeah. the piercing on his side, and the crown of thorns smashed upon his head. That's when his body was actually broken. And he said, do this in remembrance of me to show, more, show forth my death and suffering till I come again. When he broke the bread and distributed it, he said, do this in remembrance of me to show forth my death and suffering until I come again. He says, take you all of it and eat. And they all did eat. And Lord, we did this not for the nourishment for these mortal bodies, but we did this for the nourishment for the soul. And when Jesus poured the fruit of the vine, he says, this is my shedded blood that was given for you as a ransom. It represents the shedding of his blood for the New Testament and for the New Covenant. When he poured the fruit of the vine, he said, do this in remembrance of me to show forth my death and suffering till I come again. He said, drink ye all of it, and they all did drink. Amen. And Lord, we did this not for the nourishment for these mortal bodies, but we did this for the nourishment for the soul. And again, I thank each and every one of you for being present with us tonight. And thank you so much, Latanya Gaines. I see you in the chat. Yes, thank you so much. And you all know that it was nothing but the blood. Hallelujah. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. 
Yes. One day when I was lost, he died upon the cross. And I know so it the blood. Oh, amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. God bless amen. everyone online. Yes. Good night, everyone. everyone. God bless everybody. Good have a good everyone. night. Everybody have a good night. Love you all. Good night, everyone. Good night. Oh, we made it. Hallelujah. Y'all be blessed. Good night.